sandals on the way I'm sliding up I won't join no gang cause I speak truth and I ain't slime enough I can't kill my brothers, we the same, it's just not adding up Esau he a killer, Gino side he keeps attracting us Most I say be fruitful, multiply so we be adding up Compare his seed to the sand of the sea, we deep so you can't add us up My people they got hair inside they heart, they wanna paint us up Grew up in the red zone, blood tears, I see red flags on us This world be killing me, with lies the way they capping on me Like these publicans, they coons and seeing the way they taxing on me Prove what you say, the evidence, show me the facts, little homie Don't hold your tongue, just bring it out, what's on your mind, little brody? Riding on 4 Giados, bougie, how we sit, Moscato huh. Feast days of the Lord, champagne be rainy, poncho huh. Salvation of the Lord's people, come on, we need that pronto huh. Wisdom, yes, it bring riches, like we just won the lotto Keep huh. these commandments in the faith, my brother, that's the motto huh. Most how humble you quick, boy, if you think you macho It's real, we poor, but we rich in spirit Right, that's why we out What's going on, big brother? Right, there, Check this out real quick, bro Oh yeah, yeah, what's going on? Right, take a look at this image. Bro. Okay, okay. We're trying to get everybody opinion on this image. Okay. So just check it out, give me like five seconds. Uh-huh. Then just tell me what you think about this image right here. It's the first thing that comes to your mind when you look at that. Well, I mean like, I mean, in other words, like, help me out. <laughs> you know, I'm saying, I'm just asking okay. you. Like, what, right. real quick, what's your religious background? Oh, me, I'm a, I'm, I'm Christian. Christian, you was yeah. raised Christian? Yeah. Born and raised? Yeah. yeah. It's actually, it's like non-denomination. Non-denomination. I was just yeah. going to ask, what is it? Yeah, non-denomination. Okay, yeah. so non-denomination. Yeah. All right, so when the last time you've been to church? Oh, uh, man, it's been a minute. Yeah, but, you know, hey, I still trust and believe and keep the faith. It's been a minute, like, years? Uh, yeah. Hey, why you ain't been in so long, bro? I know, I need to get back in there. Yeah, you need to come here, though. Let me show you something real quick. Uh, yeah, so, what's going I'm on? showing you this image, though, because you see this part that Jesus is a Negro uh -huh. and not a white man. Have you ever seen Christ described as, as, as a white man or a white man? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Have you ever seen him described as a Negro? Well, you know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> be honest with you. I know. I'm, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I'm really... Thank you. I mean, I look at it like this. We, we, you know, we, we, we haven't seen it. You know, okay. but we heard about it. Right, right. So, you know, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 Right, because people took pictures and they documented them, right? Yeah, pictures and stuff. So, so the Bible is the history of the Jews, right? Yeah. And Christ is documented in the Bible. Can I show you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, give me revelation. All right, because I got it. I got it. Yeah, real quick. Okay, okay, yeah, Because he's actually documented and described in the Bible. Okay. I'm not sure if you do that or not, but it show you. Okay. All right, 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 right. Uh, this is the book of Revelation. All right. Chapter 1, verse 1. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Like, this is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Okay. Like, that's what revelation is. Yes. 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 Which God gave unto him to shoot unto his servants things which, which must jerk from the past. Right, really? And he sent his sin by it, by his angel, unto his servant John. Right. Really? Who bear record of the word of God. And a testimony of Jesus Christ. He wrote everything that Christ told him. Yes. What else? And of all things that he saw. So he wrote everything he saw down. Yes. Like you said, we haven't physically seen the right. Lord Jesus, yes, sir. right? Right, right. But John the Revelator actually saw him. Oh, yeah. Following me? Yes, sir. So yeah. we go see what he saw. Go to verse 12. Okay. Verse 12, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Right, he turned and saw the voice that was talking to him. Yes. Right, ready? And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Right. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. He saw the Son of Man. He saw Jesus. Right, ready? Oh, the garment down to the foot. Now, you know, they used to wear those ancient, you know, yeah. garments. The garments, I remember. That, right, yeah. be down to their feet. Yeah. Right, okay. so he had a long garment on, right? Yeah. And girt about the heavens with a golden girdle. Now, you know, he, 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 he coming back in this angelic kind of, so he got a gold belt, you know what I mean? Kind of fly, right, like, right? His head and his hair were white like wool. So he describing his hair and he said it's woolly like a sheep, like an afro. Right, so he got like an afro and it's like white, like how your beard is. Right. He had like white hair. Okay. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Read. And his feet 
What? That's a fine press. I remember you got the garment on and they used to wear the sandals. Yeah. Like that's why they used to wash people's feet and stuff when they yeah. walked on that at that time. Yeah. And he said his feet look like brass. Brass is like a penny, like brown. Yeah. Like your head. F if they burned in a furnace. Right, so John described Christ as a dark skinned man with an afro. Now, if you look at today's time, you would be considered a Negro. Okay. So that's why this sign says Jesus is a Negro. <coughs> okay. Now, you came out, you said, you know, no, we ain't going to see him until we die and stuff like that. But John said he described him as a, a dark skin. Yeah, yeah. So how you, how you feel about that first one? About Jesus being described as a dark skin. Well, like I say, I, I, I'm just gonna be real with you. You know what I'm saying? When, when we, when we, when we get, when we get to that, when we get there, right. we'll know. When we get where? I mean, when we get to heaven, uh, you know, when we go, wherever we going, right. wherever we going, we don't know what we. When, when you pass away, we don't know what we going. Only people that know that is the people that passed away know where they at. See, we don't know that until we get there. Right, you, believe you know what I'm saying? Right? Oh, cool. yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go. Okay, oh, okay. It's the book of Job, chapter okay. 3. Okay. In verse. Check this out, big boy. Uh huh. Let's go ahead verse. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 7. Right, bring it up. Then shall the dust return to the earth right. as it was. Right. And the spirit shall return to God who gave it. Right, right, so right, the spirit right, goes, right, goes back, goes goes back, back to the Right, that's right. right. So that's what happens when we die. But again, what I, what I want right. to touch on is we're not reading about once we die. We're okay. Because right? mm -hmm. Jesus is an actual man. You believe that, right? That walked the earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Did miracles and stuff with us and Jews. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying that John saw him. Okay. okay. He described him as a dark skin. Okay. Okay. So okay. okay. I'm saying that's how you actually look. Okay. Dark skin with an after. Okay. And I'm asking you as a dark skin man who grow your hair out, you have an Afro, right. you would look similar to Jesus. I'm okay. saying, how does that make us feel? Okay, well, it makes you feel good. Make you feel good. Yes, sir. I mean, the understanding that Christ would be a dark skinned man, right? Yes, sir. And that was the whole point that I'm showing you. So I'm saying this image here, you were saying how she feel about it, you say you should feel like this is true. Okay. Because Jesus is indeed a so-called Negro. Okay. Now, you know, you got nephews, uncles, and cousins, right? Yeah, yeah. Is your nephew a Chinese man? Uh, no, he's he a black man. Just like yeah, yeah. Right, because that's how family works. Yeah, so right. It's a Jew. Right. If he dark skinned with an afro. How will all the other Jews? Right, right. Yeah, dark skinned with the afro. Yes. But in 2024, mm -hmm. how do the Jews look now? They say they're white. Okay. People. Right. But that can't be true though, according to the Bible, right? Okay. Right. That's right. 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 So, what happened to the Jews? Then? Like how did they go from being dark skin with Afro? Oh, I'll tell you, yeah, that's right. That's that's a good question. Good question. Right. So, you mind if I show you what happened to uh, you? Yeah, I got it. Move on. Move but uh, on. it's good to see you. All right, we got a flyer for you. Bro. Okay, that's cool. But much love. I just want y'all to know that. You know, I understand you. Yeah, real talk. You a Jew, all right? Exactly. Yeah, real Jew. Yeah, I see y'all all over the place too. Y'all got some guys over there on Seven Mile and um. What's that? Seven and Grash here too. Yep. I yep. see them over there and I see them on Grand River Green. Yep. Yeah. But uh, much love, man. You know, y'all out here doing y'all thing. Right. Hey, I got a lot of love for y'all, man. I'll praise and, 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 and this is real talk, man. Seriously. I'm not just saying it because I'm in front of y'all. Y'all y'all doing y'all thing, man. And I got a lot of love for y'all. Praise the most Because, you know, we, you know, people are lost out here, man. And, and they need to know the truth. Well, they what's your name? David. 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 Yes, sir. David, man. I yeah. David. That's okay. Mighty, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate David, that. Man. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Up for the mighty brother, David. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We gonna pray for you. Man. Okay. You know what? I appreciate yeah. that. Pray for me every day. Because uh, I can. I need it. So pray for me. Yes, sir. You had a fire one day yesterday. Uh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The one you get right. Okay. Y'all was the same one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. oh, okay. Wow. Okay. I thought y'all was a different to... group. Nope. 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 Okay. Y'all the same one. You and you and his wife. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Don't forget that. All right. All right now. I'm afraid you can bring out your priest. Oh, you're safe, King. Okay, yeah, thanks, thanks, King. Oh, yeah. All right, get us Psalm 104. Fuck. Yeah, we read it to him before. I remember that. Psalm 104, 7. Uh, what is that? 104, 27. Yeah, Psalm 104, 27. 
basically uh, shit is for the sphere. Oh, it's 104 and 30. Oh, it's 29, 104 and 29. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 104 and verse 29. Right. And it reads thus, read. Thou hidest thy face, right. they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, right. they die and return to their dust. Right, so the Lord said we die, we return to the dust. Read. Read on. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. The Lord sends forth for that spirit, takes it up. Like you say, it returns to him, really. They are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. He create new bodies for them, put that new spirit in it. Get John 9 and 1. Like the brother said, you know, kind of don't, don't know what we're going when we die. So yeah, I do. Right. What's going on with y'all, too? Y'all got, got five minutes for the Bible? Yeah. Five minutes for the Bible? Come here, come here. talk to us. <laughs> John! Chapter 9 and verse 1. Because like contrary to popular belief, we actually know what's going to happen to us when we die. Like the Bible describes. Right? The Most High actually documented what happens to death. Why don't you see it here, Mike? Bring it up. And now, again, Ecclesiastes 6 It's the book of Ecclesiastes. No, I want to bring this up first. Book of John, chapter 9 and verse 1. And as you how it shines, passed by, you saw a man. Which was blind from his birth. The Lord said he's seen a man blind from his birth. Like you read it. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? Like who did sin? Right, read This man or his parents that he was born blind. Right, so how can a man be born blind for his sin? That's because the Lord sent forth for that spirit and created a new body. He's getting judged in that new body that he created. That's called regeneration. I saw it. Right? So the Lord will recreate spirit or recreate bodies and renew the spirit over and over and over again. It's like you cut a blade of grass and then that same dirt grows forth, you know, another blade of grass. Right? So you that up. Drop that in. This is a book, book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6 and verse 6. Right? Yay! Though he lived a thousand years twice old, yet have he seen no good. Do not all go to one place. Right, yeah, all go to one place. What's going on, big bro? What's going on? What's your name? Fader. Say Fader? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Fader. My name is Kabash, man. So, uh, what? I said my name is Kabash. Kabash. Nice to meet you, Fader. So, nice you. brother say you ran into you before? Yeah, I'm over uh, by the Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, okay, okay. That's what's up. So, uh, what you all here doing, man? Just out here, downtown, yeah. Downtown, just enjoying the festivity. Yeah. Oh, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. So I got a, I got a question for you, man. What's your religious background? I don't got no exact religious background. Yeah, you got a religious background. You wasn't raised Muslim or Christian or nothing mm. like that? All right, all right. So what, like, what do you believe in? God. You believe in God, so you believe in the heavenly Father, God, stuff like that. Yeah. How about the Bible? How do you feel about the Bible? <laughs> That's a hard one. I don't know what to believe. It's a text written. You know, it's hard. At this point, it's hard to believe exactly everything that's written in the Bible. Right, right. Like, name, like, name, like, one thing that's hard to believe in the Bible. That's, that's your heard. I mean, in the Old Testament, you have just, you know, we passed the Old Testament, but it's just my viewings people in the early end with the Israelites and people that he was his chosen people it just was kind of confusing for me to believe that it was so easy for you to get on God's bad side right. but now you got everybody sinning and it's like you got a lot of grace with that because of Jesus sacrifice but in the beginning it, for me it was just like it was kind of confused you know what I'm saying right. so in other words basically the way the Lord handled his people in the Old Testament he was like, ah, oh, that's kind of, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's kind of crazy that he would do something like that, right? It was hard for me to get past Leviticus. Yeah. Right, right. So I got a question. You got any kids or anything like that? Yeah. Right, so say, what, like, you got a son or a daughter. Both. Both? All right, you got the best of both worlds. That's that's beautiful, man. How old are they, if you don't mind me asking? Six three. Six three. So say a six-year-old, right? Is that your boy or your girl? My six-year-old is my girl. Right, so say your little girl, your little princess, right? Say she, she's, uh, I don't know, 10 now. 11, 12, and you tell her, hey, you know, make sure you wash the dishes for me, you feel me? And just wash the dishes for me, you know, you know, and just, you know, I'll reward you. Yeah. And then you come home, right, and she broke all the dishes. How would you feel about it? 
And she broke all the dishes? Yeah, you told her, like, wash the dishes. And I'll give you a reward. Then you come home and she broke all the dishes. She did it out of spite? No, oh, she just broke all the dishes. Who knows? Who then I, if it ain't out of spite, I don't care. It's replacement. I'm saying you wouldn't care if she just broke all the No, I'm saying she did it on purpose. Like, she just broke she all the dishes. She did it on purpose? I'm saying you told her, wash the dishes. <laughs> Then when you come home, all the dishes broke, the whole kitchen destroyed. She smeared. I had questions. Over. I had questions for her. For yeah, what like. you, would, be, would you be upset though? A little bit, yeah. Be a little bit upset. Yeah. I say you talk to her, you get the questions, and she say, I won't do it again, right? Yeah. And then you say, all right, clean your room. And you come home, and she tore up all her sheets, yeah. and it's full up everywhere. Yeah. And she broke the TV. How'd you feel about it? I'm be upset. And, and she just keep doing, like, you see where I'm going with yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess what? That's what the Israelites did to God, bro. That's what the Israelites did. The Lord said, hey, just do this, and I got y'all. But they kept sinning, and sinning, and sinning, and sinning nonstop. His grace ran out. So I'm not sure what Bible you read, but when you actually go into it, the Lord had a lot of mercy for his people, but they constantly sinned against him to the point where we had to force his hand. But at some point, you're going to have to have some kind of discipline implemented for your daughter. Right? And the Lord actually said that. Give me the spirit of the Lord. What's that song? Uh, Proverbs 18 24. I thought y'all was taking a group picture over here. I ain't know what was going on. <laughs> no, I don't want that one. I want 18 24. Yeah. Or no, no. I want the spirit of the Upper. No, it starts in this one. This is the proverb, chapter 13 and verse 24. Right? He that spared his rod hateth his son. The Lord said if you spare your rod, you hate your son. Because you ever heard the saying they say life will teach you better than I can. Because if you don't listen to your father and he's trying to guide you in your youth, by the time you get older, now the police gunning you down. They literally shoot you with no mercy. So the father's love, sometimes that discipline, it might hurt, it might sting, but it's for the better of your people. Right? Like what's one of the top causes of death in the black community? You want me to be for real? Yeah, well, yeah. Black, black on black violence. That's actually not the top cause. I mean, you got cop police brutality, bro. You got to be real. No, it's, it's black on black no, violence. What, what do you think? It's actually uh, heart disease. Heart disease. Because of the food? Because of the food. Yeah. But guess what? God actually, hey, God actually told us who we can and can't eat, though. But we go against him. Wasn't eat. that in the Old Testament, though? Well, that's the thing. The Old and the New Testament are one and the same. So where does Jesus' sacrifice come into us not, like, okay, like, in, in God's, in God's word, like, where does it come where you, you feel, you still feel like it's certain things we should or should not eat, like, you know, with fish without scales. You go watch your fucking mouth you talk about goddamn You know how when you eat something or you touch something, you become unclean to it. Right. So I'm going to show you uh, something in the Bible. No, I don't know. Cool. 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 Smart, smart. I'm about a 20, but I'm about a 30 or 40. I don't know. 
is how do y'all feel like in the book of Job yeah. he was so faithful to God right. right Job was faithful his entire life his kids were on the line everything he never questioned God right. and then God let Satan come in he said hey you got all these people but Job ain't touched you bro right. so like let me see let me test Job faith let me touch him right. let me kill his kids he get you can do anything to him you can give him disease you can do everyone you can take off but you can't kill Job right. how do you feel about and, and Okay, back with God's people as Israelites too, when they tested his faith, and they, I would say the Israelites tested him multiple times when they went, we can't go into this land because we will surely die. Uh -huh. They tested him then and he let them die though. So it's like, how do you ever know was he going to let them die or not? And with Job, how do you feel about him letting Satan come into your life when you only been faithful your entire life? You know, that's all right, that's, that's my thing. It's like, I'm, I still believe in God no matter what, but it, at a point when my brother died, I kind of question the devil because I question why God let him into my life. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 1. Right. My son, right. if thou come to serve the Lord, right. prepare thy soul for temptation. Lord say what? Prepare thy soul for temptation. Lord say you come to serve him, you got to prepare your soul for temptation. Like you read it. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Right. And make not haste in time of trouble. Right, see, he said, don't make haste in your time of trouble. He said, constantly endure, man. Right, keep reading. Read on. Cleave unto him and depart not away. Right. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. And then Joe get increased at the last end. He got four children. He got dealt with the will. I got that. Because he endured. Right, yeah, he endured that. Con, this took a joke. It's a lot. It's the book of Job, chapter 23 and verse 10. Right. 
but he knoweth the way that I take. Right. When he have tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I shall what? I shall come forth as gold. Now, if you familiar with how gold is created, when they dig that gold out the earth, it's filled with impurity. They gotta toss it and burn it in the furnace to make it pure. That's how the Lord is doing his service. Those who want to serve him, they, they a little rusty. So you gotta kind of put that gold and purify them by putting them through that fire. Right? It's just like if you got homeboys and friends, you don't know who really your friends you go through the fire with. So you go through troubles with. You don't know you really your friends a cop pull you all over. And now you gotta see where you really stand at. This is the book of Job, chapter 42, and verse 10. Right. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Uh, he got twice as much at the end, bro. Then, yeah, came, then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. And then eat bread with him in his house and bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand sheep asses. And he had seven sons and three daughters. Seven sons, three daughters. I'm gonna finish this right here. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna finish it, but catch me while I was down here, and I'm gonna be real. I got out of jail recently. I might be dressed in something, but I lost my family. I didn't lose them to death, but I lost my relationship with my baby mama. I'm not with my kids right now. I'm homeless right now. I got a couple dollars in my pocket, but I'm trying to have my faith in God. But from losing my brother and her leaving me in my trials of of testament, me turning into God in jail, but then getting out and feeling all this temptation around me. I don't know what to do, bro. I, I'm listening to y'all because I'm hoping God got something to say to me. Because my plans was to go to the top of that building and if I had the strength to jump off, bro, today. I'm just being real because it's on my heart. So I'm hoping maybe God got something in you that's going to convince me otherwise. Because right now, I just, I'm just down here just being down here, bro. And I heard that. You gotta endure. He says, so you come in to serve and we start to test your spirits to see if you're weak or not. The Lord wants soldiers. He wants you to constantly be normal. So you gotta stand up bold for the Heavenly Father. You can't bold as a first form of explanation. He has sent me in dark places as they be dead of old. He has hedged me a boat that I cannot get out, and he has made me a chain heavy. Right? And this is Jeremiah crying out to his people. I'm not breaking down. You can uh, He has sent me in dark places as they have be dead of old. He has hedged me a boat that I cannot get out, and he has made me my chain heavy. Also, when I cry and shout, he shut up out my prayer. He has enclosed my ways and have hewn the stones. He has made my path and he has my sin. He was unto me as a bare lion in wait and as a lion in secret places. He has turned aside my ways and have pulled me into place into pieces. He has made me desolate. He has bent his bow and set me as a mark for an arrow. He have cursed the arrows of his quiver, uh, of his quiver to, to enter into my reins. And I was a derision to all my people and their song all day. He hath filled me with the bitterness and he hath made me drunken with woodworm. He also broke in my teeth and my gravel, my stones. He hath covered me with ashes and thou hast removed my soul from off from peace. And I forget prosperity and I said, my strength and my hope perish from the Lord. Remember my affliction and my misery, the woodworm and gall. My soul have them still in remembrance and is humble in me. All that was to do was to humble you down. Lamentations was really going into the same thing that you was reading as well. You're going to feel that deepness and that darkness. You're going to get beaten down. You're going to feel like changes in you. But in that remembrance, all that did was humble you down. All that did was bring you into understanding.
understand that so you can finally submit to the most high. So right. you can finally can get your life on the line. Because our God, contrary to popular belief in what Christianity has told us, he is a terrible, destructive God that will bring us down and make us tremble before our feet. But that's what's also going to get us strong. We all went through that. We all felt like we couldn't do nothing. The fact that you said that, and the Lord is going to say something to you, Lamentations, the book of Jeremiah, one of the mightiest prophets who's crying about the gates of Jerusalem being burned down. So I'm going to read all this a little bit. Right? My soul is still in remembrance, and it is humble in me. This I recall in my mind, therefore I have hope. So in that and all that that, that happened to Jeremiah, he said, I have hope still. Right. That's what, see, there Tell is no that, other yeah. way to explain that and right. make it feel like it's big. See, I, we, we can't be like a Christian pastor and just sing to you and make make hope seem like this is something that's going to make you just jump up for joy. Right. Hope is that very little small thing that only can be explained to you after you've been beat down that much. That's what hope is. It's right. a small thing that matters a lot. And I'm going to read on just a little bit more. And uh, and I recall my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. So his compassions ain't going to fail. Right? We ain't consumed because of that. You can't jump off no bridge and be consumed, man. You got to fight for that. That's what hope is at the end of the day. But we're going to get the victory. Just like Job did all the time. Just like you. You got it, huh? You got it. That was beautiful. Smoke. The brother had a precept too. We have a precept. No, no, bring it up. Yeah, precept. We have a precept for you too, God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse number. Let's look at verse 7. Right. And it reads, Unless I should be exalted above measure right. through the abundance of revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, right. the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Buffet me to uh. stop you, to attack you. The Lord sent Satan against you, lest you get plucked up in your pride. Like you said, it's really to humble you at the end of the day. So you have to serve the Lord. So you have to need him. Right, right. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Right. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So that's what the Lord said, your strength is made perfect in that weakness. Right. Right. Once you get over this, get over this hump, how strong you will be. That's what he said. Because a lot of times you gotta go to that, you gotta go through that darkness just to see light. Just like with a tunnel. You face the old darkness you know, come on. until you see that light at the end of the tunnel. And it feel way better. If it just was a cakewalk and it's easy to get to the kingdom, then it wouldn't feel like a weight getting lifted off our shoulders. It wouldn't feel if it was easy to get in shape. Yeah, that's like getting in shape. You gotta burn, you gotta push through. Right, and then you get the results. What? Your brother had a point. But the same thing that you're going through the Lord with in the instant when he's talking about Satan. Satan told the Lord on top of the stone to cast himself off. He said, as an angel want to um, guide thy feet. He said, tip not the Lord thy God, you understand? So that's the same thing. I, that, come, that popped in my mind as soon as you said that. It's, and that's the same thing that the Lord had to go through. He was tempted by Satan. How much more the, the service of him that got to get his kingdom? I had this precept for you. This is 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 8. It says, We are troubled on every side, yet not, not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Yahushua. That it also are that it also of your might be made might be made manifest in our body. So it says this for we have lived, for we which live are also delivered unto death for your house sake. That the life also of your house might be made manifest in our mortal life. So everything that the Lord went through, we literally gonna get put through it, you understand? So we have to learn the we have to learn the, the characteristics of how the Lord deal with the matter, you understand? Because the Lord said, Tell the Lord thy God. When you jump off that building, you tell the Lord. You think the Lord gonna put an angel and start walking you down the ground? No. So stay on the ground and you you pick them up. It says, the righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, and deliver them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of the virgin heart, and save as such as be of the contrary spirit. 
Yeah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of the home. Yeah, so the Lord knows deliver you out of that contrite and broken spirit. That's like a, giving a sacrifice to the Lord, having that broken and humble spirit coming to you. The Lord loves that. When you need him, when you're begging him for mercy. Right. The Lord loves that, man. Bring that up. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 2. Right. It is better to go to the house of mourning. What the Lord say? It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For death is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Yeah, the heart, the mind is made better than the sadness. Think about somebody that's never been through nothing in their entire life. Now they just gullible, they just they didn't, they didn't go through nothing. They didn't get built up. Right? So the difference. So the Lord is putting you that to prove to see if you're stand firm, stand strong for it. All the mighty prophets had to go through. Uh -huh. Like you heard Jeremiah, people trying to kill Jeremiah. This is the teaching of the gospel. You know what brothers up here that been through teaching the word of the Lord? We done been in fights. We done pulled guns out on us. The dog proof at us. Right, just for teaching the words of the Lord. Just for telling our people we're the greatest people on the planet. Right, it's a business we man. Serving the Lord isn't like he said in Christian church. You go to church, we sing and dance and it's really good. We're not up here for the Lord to sing and dance. We're out here crying out to our people. Right. Get over to return to the Lord. Right. Because America about to be destroyed. It's a lot of stuff going on. Right? I got a precept. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Let's talk about the kingdom of heaven. The suffering of this time ain't gonna compare to the glory of the kingdom of heaven. Right? Because the Lord got a lot in store for us. You can actually get to this Bible and get the true understanding and understand this for us and the gospel that the Lord got in store for us. It's unimaginable. So it's not worth the suffering that we're going through. It's not worth all oh, I lost communication with my baby mom. All oh, I help broke loose with my brother. It ain't worth giving up that glory and turning on the Lord and something like that. That makes sense, big bro? Yeah, for real. I appreciate y'all, man. Hey, man. Are you an Israelite, bro? Don't forget that, man. What's your name, bro? Hey, we gotta pay for Raider, man. Fader's my artist name. Chris is my real name. Chris. Yo, what prayers you need? Anything you want us to pray for? This, I already know God, this situation is already handled, but I re, I really gonna ask you already pray for me by speaking the word, man. So I, that's all that's all I can ask for y'all out here helping people, bro. I don't know how my day could have went if I ain't stopped right here. You an Israelite too, bro. Man. And, they, and they say all we do is yell at white people. They say all we do is yell at white people and teach hate. But the brother said, like, I'm finna kill myself, man. Give me something I need. The brother's fed the brother with the words of life. And now the brother say, I'm gonna live to live another day. Like, come y'all shout. Come, come y'all shout. Like, that's the power. And that wasn't us, man. That was all the words of the Lord. Right? Bring it out, man. That was the most high, man. Right? Only the Lord can do that. Mark chapter 6 and verse 12. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils. And they did what? And they cast out many devils. And they cast out many devils. And they anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. What? And healed them. He anointed that brother. He was sick. But he had a mind that was ready to give up. The brother spoke the words of the Lord. And that pump spirit, that pump, that, yeah, that pump that, that spirit back in them, man. Pump life back in the brother. Reset. Right, so that was beautiful, man. Hold on, hold on, hold that, bring this out real fast. Book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 5. Right? Bless or the meat. What the Lord say? Bless or the meat. Right, so the Lord cast you down so you can get humble. Uh -huh. So now you become a meek man. The Lord wants you to be meek, man. So the Lord can bless you in the latter end. Ready? For they shall inherit the earth. For they shall what? For they shall inherit the earth. Right, the blacks and Spanish and that. Look at what we went through, man. Uh -huh. Right, look at all the hell we went through. Right, you got eight-year-old white girls smiling, huh? At our demise. 
See, you know how violent the hanging is? The person gasping for air, you kind of shaking and jerking. Right. 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 And, and she's smiling, man. I know if say too, man. Right? You see that? And, and that's how you know, man, like, the Lord is with us, man. Because through all that, the Lord still chose us, man. That's, that's right. one of my favorite verses, Isaiah 14 and 1. Right! And the end, right. we choose Israel, set us in our own land, and give us these nations as slaves to give us a kingdom. That's the most beautiful news you can ever hear. That's the true gospel. Right, so you can't ever say all we do is teach hate and white man, white man, white man. But they skip these videos. That's right. 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 This ain't gonna get a, a 10,000 views. Oh, they have no idea. That's Brother right. gets revived from near death, man, by the prophets of the Lord. They ain't gonna, that's gonna get 100 views, man. Cause all Jake wanna do is see you, uh, Esau kissing the booth and us getting on uh, Moab and us talking about the destruction of America. Man, the hell with that, man. We out here for our people, man. That's right. To heal the people like Christ did. Man. That's, right. That's why we really out here. Brothers can't forget that mission. That was beautiful, man. Right? The brothers out. I thank y'all. Y'all out here helping people and walk away. Heal the brothers in the spirit. Come. So I gotta clap it up for the Lord. Man. Come. Corinthians chapter 16 and verse right. 16, right? it say that ye submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. Right. What's going on? So we got the right, young brothers right here, yeah. you know, wanting to know, hey, who the, who the Israelites is? Hey, don't want to know the Israelites, sir? I'll pray. Yeah. I'll pray. So I told I said, my brother, don't pick up right, right. I'll pray. I'll pray. What made y'all ask that, though? Who are the Israelites? Uh, just curious. I was, I was just curious. We were just curious. What you know about the Israelites? Uh, Personally, not much. No, but I want, I want to know. So I want to know. They the black people. You say what? They us. They the black people. Hey, hey, us. They the black people. Okay. And one more thing, he said, you know, he wanted to get into Christianity. Oh, you want to get that? that Christianity? He said, because he said, I want to get more into religion. Yeah, that, that what he said. Okay. I guess. I just thought that that's what. Okay, okay. okay. What make what make you want to get into like Christianity though? Uh, I wasn't Christianity by itself. I want to see. I want to learn more about more religion. Okay. Religions in general. All right. I just thought that that was what uh, they were going to. Oh, okay. Talking about religion. Well, yeah. the thing about the Bible, yeah. you know, when you read the Bible, you read about Caesar Augustus, or you read about Alexander the Great, you read about all these different, like Cyrus the Great, all these different Persian kings. Because the Bible, contrary to popular belief, is actually a history book. Right? Now, have you ever wondered about our history? Before slavery, who was we? What do we eat? What do we dress like? What was our culture? Y'all ever thought about that before? Was we just naked swinging from bonds in Africa? Y'all think that? No. Now the thing about the Bible is our history is found in the Bible. And we gonna prove that to you. Get Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. Matter of fact, get verse 68. Oh, we gotta read a few verses, verses for y'all. So y'all can understand who the Bible is actually talking to. I read this up. This is the book of Deut Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 68. Right? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord said he's gonna bring us into Egypt again. Now Egypt is an actual uh, word that means slavery, house of bondage in the Bible. Montezari, that's what it means. Right, read. Say. With ships. With ships. The Lord said he's going to bring the Israelites, or a group of people, right, to slavery with ships. Right, read. Right, you read. By the way, bruv, I speak unto thee. Thou shalt see the Lord again. Right, read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Read. Who bond men and bond women? You're gonna be sold for slave men and slave women, right? Really? And no man shall buy you. Right, so the Lord is telling the group of people, right? The Lord is telling a group of people they're gonna get sold off of shit. Right? Y'all following me? You got a group of people getting sold off of shit. Right, now bring this up. Book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 6. The children also of Judah. And the children of Jerusalem. Now that's the topic, the Jews and Israelites. That's the children of Jerusalem. The Jews, the Jews and Israelites have you what? Have ye sold or to the Grecians? Now the Lord is saying the Jews and Israelites will get sold to Greeks, which are white people. So you got a group of people who get sold off of ships to white people. Right? Let's get you another. Let's see what these Jews look like. Right? Y'all ever got a description of the Jews on the Bible? Right, we gonna check out what Christ looked like, because he was a Jew, right? Right, get Revelation 1 and 13. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 13. 
Right? I got a question for y'all. Like I asked about the beginning. Y'all ever wondered what did we do before we came here to America? What was our customer? What did we eat? What did we dress like? Right, let me show y'all. I'm gonna show y'all something. I'm gonna show y'all how, how we got down in the ancient world. Like how what we used to eat. One to twenty-five. Oh yeah. First Kings one to twenty-five. First Kings chapter one and verse twenty-five, right? For he has gone down this day and have slain oxen. Right, slain oxen. Right? And fat cattle. Fat cattle. Right? And sheep, sheep in abundance. Right. And have called all the king's sons. Well, he called the king's sons. So this is a royal meal. They got oxen, they got sheep, right? They got cattle on the floor. And the captains of the host. Right, that's king that got you got all the top men. The king's son, you got the captains of the army. And Abiathar the priest. Right, the priest is the top top man. Right, the high priest. And behold, they ate and drink before him. Right, they ate and drank some wine. Oxen, cattle, sheep. Now what animal was it that with them? Right? Now why would they eat pig? Alright, let's show you. Right? Get through the rock in chapter 14. The verse uh, number uh, three. No, I want number four. Yep. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 4. I want to show y'all something real quick. Just the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 4. Alright, uh, uh, verse 3. So what? Verse 3. Right? Thou shalt not eat in the abominable thing. Right, so the Lord told us not to eat certain things. Right, read. These are the beasts which ye shall eat. The Lord named the beast we can eat. Right, read. The ox. The ox. They was eating ox, read. The sheep. The sheep. They was eating sheep. Good old lamb chops. Who don't like ox to lamb chops? Right? Delicious. Right, read. And the goat. And the goat. You can eat goat. Curry goat. That kind of stuff. Right, read. The heart. The heart. That's going into a deer. deer. Right, read. And the rope book. The rope book, another type of deer, right? And the fellow deer. Right, that's the bandy right there, right? right? And the wild goat. Right, the wild goat, right? And the fur. Right. And the wild ox. And the wild ox. The fire guy, that's the die shine in the heat. That's a vice and like buffalo, right? And the camels. And the camels, right? These are different types of animals we can't eat, right? It's going to tell you what all these animals have in common, right? right? And every beast that parted the hook. Right, they got the parted hook. Right, read. And cleaveth the cleft into two claws. It's a two toes. They got the two toes, right? It's the body. Right, like you think about a cow. They feet. Right, think about deer. They catch, right, read. And chew with the cud. And they what? And chew with the cud. And they chew the cud. Chewing the cud is going into something called rumination. Y'all ever heard like a cow got four stomachs? Right, that's not actually chew. They got four compartments. Right, the rumen, the reticulum, the reticulum, the alphasum, and the ovus. Yeah, it's one stomach, but it's four compartments. Digestives that move a certain way for something called rumination. Cows got that, sheep got that, deer got that. They can't eat. A pig, on the other hand, is a monogastric. Mono meaning one gastric meaning stomach. It digests food like y'all do. It don't break down the food like a cow. It doesn't get the proper minerals from it. That's why God told us not to eat it when you some unhealthy beast. It doesn't chew the cud, it doesn't digest the food properly. Because the Lord created everything, right? So what he knows is good for us, he didn't know what's good for us, right? So that's why we can't eat it. Because it don't chew that cud, it don't digest the food properly. Somebody look up uh, ruminant meat on Google. Is ruminant meat healthy? I'm going to show you all this. Is R-U-M-I-N-A-T. Is meat healthy? Let's look up health. I want to find an exact uh, Rich in micronutrients. Ruminant animal organs are actually sources of micronutrients that are often lacking in modern diets. You see that? Yeah, so they, they Heart, got for example, is high in CO2. Antioxidant that supports cardiovascular health. See that? Kidneys are rich in B vitamins, selenium, and iron. See that? So ruminant meat is actually healthier for them. Right, so even, even the scientists will tell you. But God told us thousands of years ago. They don't eat that. They don't chew the cud. They don't go through rumination. Even that word uh, cud in the Hebrew is your right. It means scraping the throat. And that's what it does. It digests it, then it comes back up, scrapes the throat, and it kind of eats it again. It goes back out. It, it re salivates it, it re digests it. So it breaks it all the way down, getting everything out of it. And now we can take that grass and turn it to protein and bust it. 
right? So you can't eat pork. Have y'all ever ate pork before? Y'all never ate pork before? You ate pork, but you, you have, right? So would you continue to eat it now? Why would you keep eating pork? Um, I'm not trying to take away from it because I'm just not You say you're not religious? But we, we're not talking about religion, we're talking about our culture. I hear you, and I'm not up here for a debate either. I'm here for my friends. You're here for your friends, so you never ate pork before. All right, all friends from all sides. So don't ever eat uh, Deuteronomy 14 and 9. Now we're going to go into the sea creek. All right, go to the Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 9. Right? Please, he shall eat the fall there in the water. All right, the Lord said, this is what you shall eat. That's the water. All right, ready? All that has been to scale, right? shall you eat. The Lord said, if you got been to scale, Sabbath day, you're supposed to be resting. Bring it up. Giving that day to the most. 
That's when our beast stays. We got other ones too, but it, you know, it's time for fellas to just go through it, break down all these mistakes. We don't want to overwhelm. That being said, what have you learned so far? Yeah. Saturday and Saturday. You know, not mixing up. Yeah, you're like warm out your coach. Yeah. 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 And the commandments is not eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, stuff like that. Keeping it seven, right? You don't mind selling. Yeah. 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 Ye